Okay, one big good morning, and then we get into our uh, learning for today. We will continue with our orientation classes. So in the morning, we will have three sessions. And as we said yesterday, we are going to study from the APC publication, Laying the Axe to the Root. So um, the on-campus batch, please hold on to your uh, physical copies. And online uh, students, please remember to download the PDF version and uh, uh, follow along as we study. We are going to pray and then we are going to get into God's word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, it is your word in our lives that brings refreshing. It is your word that brings strength, your word brings direction. Lord, it's your word, Lord, that does a deep work in our lives, changing and transforming us. Lord, even as we spend time studying, Lord, from uh, 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 today's publication, we just pray, God, that uh, you would speak to each one of us and, God, that uh, you would help us, oh God, to um, strengthen our hearts, Lord, and, and set it aright uh, to keep following you, Lord, with a right heart all the days of our life. We thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we've been saying that uh, for us, especially because we are now in Bible college and we want to learn God's word, there are certain heart attitudes that we must first deal with. So uh, what we are looking at is a couple of these attitudes. And yesterday, uh, Pastor Jai Kumar was talking about self being one of those hindrances to us living the life that God has called us to live. And uh, today we will look at three different uh, hindrances in our heart attitude. You may call it um, the works of the flesh. You may call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, sinful mindset, unrenewed mind, whatever you want to. But uh, what we are saying is when we have these things in our hearts and in our lives, even though we want to serve God, even though we want to move ahead in our faith journey and in our relationship with God, there is something blocking us. Okay, So that blockage should first be removed. Only then it becomes easier for us to pursue God and pursue his purposes. So yesterday we saw how, um, you know, self, making myself big in comparison to God in my life, how that uh, gives me a wrong perspective and uh, the way I deal with um, matters of God or matters pertaining to people in my life, uh, it, it can end up becoming very destructive. So that is something we saw. So today we will look at another important subject called as jealousy. Okay, it's called jealousy. Uh, it's chapter two in our uh, notes for us to uh, track along. Now, jealousy, uh, we know it's not good. We know that uh, uh, God does not approve of this. But at the same time, Somewhere as believers, you know, we, we, may, um, we may justify ourselves and say, what is there? It, it's okay. It's just a small thing. Uh, if we are feeling jealous about someone or, uh, uh, you know, jealous regarding something that is happening in a person's life. And, you know, we say it's okay. Yeah, I felt jealous. It's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we are not careful, you know, this can take root in our hearts and uh, that can become a very big issue. All right. So jealousy is not a godly thing. Now, when Paul writes to the Galatians, I'm going to try to go uh, uh, align to our notes as much as possible so that, you know, you, you can um, uh, be in sync with me. Okay. So the... Uh, scripture text that I am referring to, it's in the notes. If you want to quickly look at it, you can just turn uh, into in the notes and look at it. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21, where Paul lists out 
works of the flesh okay works of the flesh now we know works of the flesh are uh, sinful works that are against the work of the spirit in our lives or the fruit of the spirit what is the fruit of the spirit fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience goodness kindness kindness um, long suffering and i forget the other one but uh, as we consider the fruit of the spirit we can imagine you know uh, the very nature of christ isn't it because who is the fullness or who is the embodiment of this perfection it's christ it's jesus so god wants us to be like jesus to have the fruit of the spirit but instead of that if we have the works of the flesh which are opposite to the fruit of the spirit that is not pleasing to god so paul wrote to the galatians and he made a list of attitudes and uh, lifestyles which do not glorify god and in that list here galatians 5 verses 19 to 21 as you look through it we will find uh, the word envy right and we also find the word jealousy he says these are the works of the flesh and they are evident and then he goes on to say that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so can you imagine it's very serious he says when there are those who practice meaning uh, we can we can assume that you know people are not repenting and they're carrying on with these attitudes we just called out two from the list but there are many more okay but envy and jealousy it's serious enough where god says that uh, when we practice this there is even a possibility to not enter the kingdom of god okay so that sounds dangerous we don't want to be in that position of uh, harboring jealousy and envy in our lives so we must stay away from it now how many of us know you know those of us who are interested in gardening okay even if uh, some of us are not interested i'm sure you'll understand what i'm trying to say when we want we have a small uh, space and we want to grow a plant which we like okay you put that plant whatever that is a fruit plant or a vegetable or something right so after a while if you're not taking care right you're just pouring water you're not looking at it you're just leaving it for many many months what happens is our plant growing yes because at least it's getting some water it's getting some sunlight but along with that there are other little little plants that grow around it is that true or not yeah we didn't we didn't plant them but they are also growing okay is it easy for us to pull out that plant the unwanted plant when it is small you all agree with me it's easy isn't it now what if we just let it be okay we let it be and um, uh uh okay i i don't know the exact details i'm not that good at plants and all but uh, there is there was a small weed growing near my home okay near the wall of our home and i didn't know which one it was and it was growing it was looking pretty nice only so i didn't have a problem with it but one of my family members they said uh, we shouldn't let it grow because this plant actually grows into a tree and it has a very strong and a deep root system so if it grows very deep then it will not only affect the wall but it may even affect the the building okay and i was surprised i was like oh really can the root do that it looks quite small right now isn't it but if we let it grow big it's going to become difficult to pull it out so what is the point that we are making whenever we see small little issues in our heart attitudes that is the best time to correct it you know instead of letting it stay and then after a while we are trying to uproot it the longer we let it be the longer we let it grow the more difficult to get rid of that attitude or that sin in our 
lives, right? So uprooted, the very first instance that we observe, uh, you know, hey, the way I'm thinking, it's not correct. Okay, God, I'm sorry. I should not have thought like that. I should not have done like that. Immediate, immediate. But whenever we excuse ourselves, we say, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Everybody thinks like that. Why should I change? You know, it becomes a bigger problem and a bigger problem. Before we know it, it's so big that uprooting it, uh, it's not so simple anymore. It has a root system. It's destroying us. So envy and jealousy is like that. And, you know, Paul, uh, he says it's carnal thinking. Can believers have all these attitudes? You know, we may also ask the question, hey, this is Bible college. We are all believers. Why are we talking about self? Why are we talking about jealousy? You know, that's not our problem, right? But you see, even when Paul was writing to the Corinthian church, the Corinthian church, they were believers. They were believers who were appreciated by Paul for the way that they were growing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, but even then, he wrote to them and he said, look, uh, in 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3, he says, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife and divisions among you, you are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So, even when we are believers, what, do, what did we see just now? The Corinthians had these problems. They are believers, but envy, um, strife, divisions among believers. Yes, among believers. So Paul is saying, what is this? You know, you're functioning out of your carnal mind, meaning the unrenewed mind. How can our mind be renewed? By the scriptures by the word of God. So believers uh, functioning with an unrenewed mind is the problem. And so whenever we pick up, notice that, right, jealousy, we have to deal with it. Is it possible even for, let's say, mature um, believers to, to function with jealousy as the motive? Why not? When Paul writes to the Philippians, you know, he says there are people who are doing ministry also because it's like competition. We are competing with another person. Oh, they have a church, I'll get a bigger church. Oh, they have meetings, I will have more meetings. You know, they preach well, I will preach better. They're on TV, I will be whatever, you know, on the internet. So, but what is the motivation? Motivation is not that I must genuinely preach Christ. I must reach out to people. I must, uh, you know, uh, see that uh, regions are touched, uh, God's kingdom is built. Those are all good motives, right motives, but wrong motive. What is the wrong motive? We are jealous. As soon as somebody says they're doing a conference, we feel if they are doing, we can also do. But why are we doing it? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Why? Why am I doing it? Am I doing it to challenge another person who's doing it? That's the way we are going about things. There is, uh, you know, there, there is jealousy in our hearts and uh, we must recognize it. So we will come, uh, we will come to how we are going to deal with it. But let's just look at jealousy from scripture and uh, see, uh, are there any, any examples of jealousy? What do you all think? Were there uh, any examples of jealousy in the Bible? If so, you can uh, just... Maybe scream it out from here and then we have online students. Please feel free to try, uh, type it in the chat. Okay, jo Joseph, Saul, Vinay, you're reading your book very fast. <laughs> Faster than me, Saul in the notes. Anyway, good. That's correct. That's correct. Any other examples? Cain and Abel. Good. That's also in the book. <laughs> very nice. Any other examples? Joseph, Cain, yes? Saul and David, yeah, okay, great. No, uh, probably because these are very um, notable examples. That's why we are all familiar. So that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, we have uh, some responses here. Joseph, Cain, Saul, uh, and David, Saul, 
okay moses aaron and miriam okay yeah so even there there was a little bit of uh, you know an issue among them thank you for that andrew um yeah so that's true we we see all these examples so what exactly happened you know in the case of cain and abel um cain was was jealous uh, with his brother abel because god accepted uh, abel's sacrifice okay so this is uh, sibling jealousy he got upset you know that uh, why is god accepting his sacrifice and not my sacrifice and um, it was quite dangerous what happened in this situation because we'll see later on also that when we leave the seed of jealousy you know when the weed is small uh, it's already going to cause damage but when it becomes larger it's worse in the situation cain was so jealous of abel that he murdered his brother can you imagine can you imagine what jealousy became in his heart it just became that big tree with deep roots that he came to a point to hate his brother so much uh, that he even murdered his brother okay so cain and abel that's a true example joseph and his brothers so what was uh, the situation here it felt like jacob was giving preference to joseph okay so when um, the uh, parents uh, it's just my version so maybe when he uh, gave them some gifts he gave joseph a, a bigger portion or, or something great you know like in india for those who are from other countries you may not relate to this but you give a toffee to everyone and then you give like a whatever five star or a cadbury's to one kid what will happen in the house fight right immediately people start all the kids start fighting they're like why did my parents give you a cadbury chocolate why did i get only a toffee and they start fighting okay unfortunately jacob he probably did not realize that that's what is happening he uh, maybe unknowingly he kind of showed preference to joseph and so the moment the brothers observed oh dad likes him more than all of us they became so jealous they became so jealous that they tried um, you know they wanted to kill him but uh, they at least sold him right so it's it's uh, really hard for us to digest that how can these brothers do uh, something like that but they did it why there was jealousy in their hearts they were jealous about the brother whom the father liked okay and Saul and David is another classic example for us and this is um when David comes into the picture okay earlier people were happy with Saul people were praising Saul and you know they were um, uh, singing songs about Saul's accomplishments now David comes into the picture and then people start we know you know people were uh, praising him and they were saying that you know when uh, uh, david has done much more than saul right the moment saul sees this there's jealousy in his heart so see actually for De uh, for saul he should have been very secure he's already a king he's already a king and david is not not a king at that point why should saul even be jealous of you know some new person who's come on the scene jealousy though he has the position he's already secure in that he's not able to take it that people are recognizing another person who's probably uh, you know done well much better than him in the same areas what did Saul try to do Saul tried to put David in dangerous situations he sends him you know to the front line and he says okay you go fight this battle with the hope that david will die okay if i put him there he'll anyway die so that way i won't even get the blame that i killed him okay. so can you see how the mind is working okay he's not thinking um 
um, sort of uh, good thoughts for anyone, Saul. He is thinking evil for David. What is the motivation? It is jealousy. So jealousy uh, resulted in the wrong thoughts and the wrong attitudes, the wrong actions towards people. Okay, And uh, in the examples that we've seen, relationships were affected. Relationships were deeply affected. And we saw how those who were jealous harmed, ended up harming the people whom they were jealous with. So this is something for us to um, really think about. And that's why in the beginning when we started discussing, I shared that uh, we must not dismiss a thought saying it is too small and it won't affect. Now, what can happen if we um, harbor jealousy in our hearts? Let's look at how it will manifest. Okay, how it will manifest. So, one of the manifestations is murder. One of the manifestations is murder. Uh, yes, Cain murdered his brother Abel. We might say, I'm not murdering anybody. Come on, that's too huge. I'm not that kind. I don't murder anyone. But what did Jesus say? You know, if you're angry with your brother without a reason, it's like that. It's, um, you know, like uh, murder even. So we have that passage uh, from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 and 22, where Jesus said, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka has, uh, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. So it's not just the action, but also the heart. Okay. In fact, another parallel scripture right below uh, says that whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Who are our brothers? Our brothers are, of course, our family, but you know, we have others. Like Jesus taught about neighbors, love your neighbor as yourself. The people in our lives, people around us, people in the church, people we work with, um, they may be other Christian brothers and sisters, other leaders, pastors. They're all our brothers. But what does scripture say? So if we hate them, right, uh, then it's equivalent to murder. Not physical murder, not in action. But what are we doing? You know, murder could mean that we may, we may murder their reputation. We just say something about them. Oh, that person, yeah, I know them. Uh, they're like that. Something false. Do you think it will affect that other person? It will. But why did I say like that? Because of jealousy in my heart. That person is doing better than me. They are getting the opportunities that I want. Okay? So, murder may not be physical. But murder can be in other ways. Where there's ill will. There's um, accusations. There are other things that we do to cause trouble for the brothers or the sisters in our lives or in the ministry. Uh, so that is not the right motivation. That's not how we should live our lives or how we should do our ministry. right? So murder is a manifestation of jealousy. Then of course, outbursts of anger, outbursts of anger. Uh, and uh, here, uh, you know, in the context of husband and wife, uh, Proverbs 6, 34 says, for jealousy is a husband's fury. So an outrage uh, in the case of unfaithfulness of a wife. And how does the outburst uh, reveal itself, right? Um, or why is there an outburst in the first place? Jealousy. So jealousy can cause an outburst. Or we could say uh, a reaction. Sometimes uh, we are jealous of people. 
and they may have done a good work but uh, we may look at them and say no it's not good okay. uh, or we're just angry with them and they don't understand why are we angry what did what did they do to make us angry but there's a deep seated jealousy in our hearts that we are not able to acknowledge them and we we just irrationally we we uh, you know burst out on them but that's because of underlying jealousy okay so outbursts can result from harboring jealousy the other uh, manifestation so what is a manifestation manifestation means uh, yes it is there like how uh, pastor jay kumar was sharing yesterday that uh, there there is a problem and uh, that problem has symptoms so what are the symptoms of jealousy in us uh, murder not physical okay uh, but we can do that you know character um, putting somebody's you know putting somebody down that can happen that's murder also uh, and then we said outburst right getting irrational um, irrationally angry over someone who has not done anything right so that's the second manifestation what's the third manifestation revenge revenge okay so uh how does this take place you know this is like we want to give people um we want to ensure that you know we um create a situation just the kind that you know they created for us or treat them worse than that so let's take for example okay uh, it's just an example you go to somebody's house and uh, um you know you uh, ex- you're expecting or oh, at least they'll give you tea coffee something like that okay now you go and uh, they only give you water you're so disappointed you're like what is this i travel so far to come and meet this person and they didn't even give me tea or coffee which you know this again is like the indian way uh, in general to um, host someone uh, so you invite them to your house and they come right and you don't even give them water and you're like you gave me only water wait i'll show you i won't even give you water so what is that it's revenge revenge it's a i'm giving us a simple thing but revenge can happen in many different ways at all levels we can take revenge from our family members oh when i was going through a hard situation you didn't listen to me now you're going through a tough situation i won't listen to you right what is that revenge this plain revenge or you know somebody didn't support you at the workplace now they need help and you're like i won't support you i'll make it i'll make things difficult for you what is that revenge where is it coming from from deep within our hearts there are roots there are you know seeds of jealousy but now it is manifesting as revenge so we need to check our hearts is why why am i doing this why are we treating people like this we will find out that there's unchecked jealousy right within okay so revenge is a manifestation or uh, like even in um, you know christian ministry what if you know somebody invites you uh, and uh, for preaching or something like that and then they they don't give you place maybe there are four chairs on the stage right and uh, you were hoping that they will call you and make you sit on the stage but they don't call your name you're so upset you say okay you come to my meeting <laughs> and then they come to your meeting and you do something worse right so uh, it can happen it can happen in different settings in different ways uh, but it's not right all right so manifestation one of the manifestations is revenge now uh, apart from that unkindness resentment okay just treating people with anger cruelty not being kind to them it can also stem from jealousy in our hearts or division division right so scriptures talk about that there's a lot of uh, sometimes you know like people are not able to um, gel together there's always quarrels fights um, why is it happening you know i've seen little kids 
right little kids uh, and there are many because they are small they don't know and they're still learning okay uh, and so if you give them a toy the parents give the uh, older kid a toy and the younger kid also says no i also want it and the older kid says no i won't give you right i won't give you and uh, so there's self over there or if the parent says no you have to give they take it and they give it to the younger kid the elder one gets jealous now right gets jealous maybe my come and hit the younger one or something why jealousy okay so uh, what's actually happening they're not able to work together at that age also there's lot of confusion division every now and then i have to call the parents come resolve the matter kids are fighting you can hear them screaming you can hear them you know uh, sort of uh, um, maybe even beating each other but parents teach them no you have to share you have to put others first so division right that's at the at that level but imagine like as we grow up uh, in our own circles so much of division so much of confusion we're not able to work together um, even as teams because we are jealous of one another right uh, so these are all the ways in which it might manifest in our lives and uh, of course another uh, a couple of other manifestations would be extreme uh, competitiveness meaning we are competing we're not doing what we're doing uh, because you know it's the right thing to do but we always have somebody in our minds and you know we want to get better than them right we want to get better than them so motivated by competition and um, there are other other things also which can reveal jealousy um easily getting into like fights easily getting into strife contentions uh, may maybe one of the reasons is because there's undealt jealousy in our hearts or um, isolation isolation means um, i can be by myself i don't need anybody i can i can deal with everything you don't have to tell me right so i want to be isolated i want to be independent i don't want anyone to tell me anything why you know maybe maybe uh, we just feel that yeah i'm okay like i'm better than everybody else right so we can isolate ourselves or it can also be that let's say in christian circles we isolate people why we say uh, i am preaching to you you only listen to me don't listen to anybody else when we say something like that what what does that mean i'm insecure i feel scared oh what if they listen to that preacher that preacher is better than me you know that preacher uh, whatever more anointed than me what if the people go there then what will happen to me right so there's jealousy in my heart so i'm doing my best not to let that person's ministry grow or you know to secure my own position insecurity um isolation independence so this is how it might show itself okay so why are we talking about these symptoms just to check whether this is happening in our own lives or you know if it's happening in in certain um uh, settings and if it is maybe maybe we might have to deal with the root of jealousy and there are you know other things like uh, we try to overprotect overprotect meaning uh, again you know like uh, maybe in the case of uh, like people who are married uh, where the husband's completely trying to control the wife like you can't go out anywhere you can't work you can't talk to anybody else because they just cared and you know they have that sense of jealousy that uh, oh, she should not interact with anyone else over protection you no know, beyond what is required but it's coming from that place of jealousy so these are all the uh, uh manifestations now what are the results we saw how it shows up isn't it in our lives what can be the results um what do you think can be the outcome of keeping jealousy in our hearts destruction destruction of what um, yeah destruction of relationships because when we are not treating people well it destroys our relationships very true yeah anything else that jealousy could do
can I answer? Right. Yeah. So uh, we come down, right? Or we lose what we have, what we have because of this wrong attitude of jealousy. That can also happen. Um, I'm just looking at the chat here. Okay. Yeah. So that's right. Uh, thank you for those um, answers. So jealousy causes destruction. Okay, it causes destruction, destruction of relationships, mm, destruction um, even of our health. Because there is a scripture, Proverbs 14 and verse 30. Uh, I'm on page 31 in the printed notes where, you know, it says a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. What is envy doing? Envy or jealousy sit, sitting inside us? It rots the bones. It doesn't bring good health to us. So when we are carrying jealousy, makes us sick. It can even make us sick, you know, mentally or um, emotionally, physically. It can affect us physically also, right? So it's quite dangerous. It's quite dangerous. We think that we are harming the other person, but it's actually harming us. It's just it's destroying our relationships, destroying our health. And, uh, you know, it makes us um, uh, sort of, it blurs our vision or the way we think uh, gets blurred. We're not able to think straight because our mind is constantly thinking of how can I harm that person? Right? How can I uh, take revenge? That's not what our mind is meant for. We can be thinking of other things, but uh, our, our vision is blurred and uh, we end up doing things which we regret later. Why did I do that? Because there was jealousy, right? So it blinds us in that way. It causes a lot of trouble and uh, uh, it opens doors. Uh, in fact, scripture says that, uh, uh, you know, it's the root of, it. don't let the root of bitterness right? Uh, be in your hearts. So when Paul writes to the Hebrews, he says that. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll cause trouble. It will even cause trouble in our Christian circles or in our believing circles, in our churches, when we are walking with jealousy. And uh, so we need to quickly uproot jealousy. So now that we have spoken, right, about um, uh, what are all the effects of jealousy, how do we overcome jealousy is the question, all right? Okay, so uh, Sister Chaya is asking for uh, a repeat of the scripture. So Sister Chaya, it's already in the notes. Um, I read it out for us, but let me quickly, Proverbs 14 and verse 30. Thirty, thirty, yeah, yes. All right. I hope uh, you got it there. Now, how do we overcome? How do we overcome? So uh, the Bible tells us that we must carry the God kind of love. First Corinthians chapter thirteen talks about love. You know, love is patient. Love is kind, and it also describes love as not being jealous or envious. True love is not jealous. It's not envious. Okay. So we must walk in love. We must pursue love in all our relationships. Okay. And how do we do this? The Bible also teaches us Romans 5.5. 5. It says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now, we might say that I don't have that kind of love. You know, those people have hurt me deeply. I can't love them. Don't worry. Use God's love to love them. Because what did we just see? Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Meaning God is pouring his love into our hearts. So if my, you know, just take this water bottle, for example, if the water goes down, I just have to pour more water to fill it. 
Now, if I, I'm saying that, oh, I don't have love. Only so much love is there in my heart for people. God says, I'll pour my love. I'll fill your bottle. You give my love to people. So that's how it works. We can receive God's love in our hearts and we can release God's love into our relationships uh, and, you know, into the lives of people. So when we walk in love, then we can overcome jealousy. How does, um, you know, this, how can we do that? We have to be conscious. We have to be conscious to consider others. Okay. So whenever we see a situation and we get jealous, maybe we're getting jealous because we're being, thinking very selfishly. But think about the other person also, right? Oh, he got an opportunity. Great. You know, the Bible teaches us in Romans 12, 15, it says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So when we see somebody doing well, and I don't think only about myself, I think about that person also, then I can rejoice. I feel like, okay, you know, that's a good thing God has done in his life, in her life. Let me be happy for them. Uh, and, uh, you know, let, let me um, congratulate them. Let me pray for them. Isn't it? So when we think like that, we're actually walking in love. Rejoice with them. Oh, something good has happened. Brother, you got a new phone. Wow, wonderful. God bless you. You're happy for them. You're not thinking, I'll get the next better phone. Because when we're thinking only about my, ourselves, then we are thinking, I should get better clothes. I should get better phone. I should get, you know, go on a better holiday. But when we see what God is doing in other people's lives, we're actually saying, let me rejoice. Praise God, you know. Uh, God is doing something good in their lives. So we are happy. Oh, they bought a car. Very good. You know, great. God bless you. You bought a house. Very nice. We rejoice with you. We pray for you. Okay. So that kind of an attitude. Do we ever, uh, you know, sing to God and we rejoice unto the Lord when we see something good happening in another person's life? That's a question we have to ask ourselves. Can I comfortably rejoice? over another one's victory. If I can do that, then yes, you know, I have dealt with jealousy in my heart. So rejoice. Rejoice over them. Walk in love. It's difficult, but we must learn to walk in love. And uh, also remember that God calls uh, all of us differently. Like in Romans chapter 12, we see a list of gifts that God gives people. You know, some are good at teaching. Some are good at administration. You know, some are good at giving. Everybody is not good at everything. So when, let's take for example, you know, some of uh, our uh, brothers here, they do all the technical work. And uh, instead of being jealous of them, I can think that, oh wow, you know, God has blessed them with that gift, praise the Lord. That may not be my gift. So thank God they have the gift. I can do what I am able to do. Maybe I am able to encourage, maybe I am able to share. Okay, fine, let me do that. But when we start comparing, that's where competition, jealousy starts coming. When we say, why should they do it? I want to do it. But are you gifted in that? That's the question to ask. So when we think like this, we can let others grow in what God has called them to grow in and we grow in what God called us to grow in. There's no competition here. There's place for everyone to grow. Okay. So let's understand that everyone is gifted differently. So we don't have to compete with another person. Okay. Uh, just rejoice in your own growth and in the growth of others. And see things from God's perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, just be grateful to the Lord. Okay, God, you know, you're doing these things in people's lives. Uh, and, uh, okay, let's take, for example, Cain and Abel. God accepted uh, Abel's sacrifice. How do you think Cain could have uh, avoided jealousy? He could have thought from God's perspective. Why did God accept my brother's sacrifice? What was there in my brother's sacrifice that was not there in my sacrifice? 
and he could have humbly corrected himself who knows when they went for the second sacrifice god may have accepted cain's sacrifice isn't it but he never gave place for that he didn't think like what was god's perspective how can i correct myself right so uh, why is god doing these things think about it no god may have a bigger reason why he's blessing someone or why their ministry is growing all of you know you may feel like i'm working just as hard but they are seeing the results god is working in a different way in their lives and in my life there's no need to compare there's no need to compete okay so think in with that kind of an attitude and keep a check uh, on on our own hearts and uh, ask ourselves questions from time to time um you know is there any jealousy in my heart do i have any jealousy against my own family member do i have any jealousy uh, as far as you know my relationships in the church are concerned um uh, or let's say you know in when people are married sometimes there's competition if one spouse is better than the other spouse in something there's competition if one is earning more than the other there's competition so can on be honest is a jealousy you know uh, against my own spouse okay i need to deal with it i need to overcome it because these are the things that will damage destroy even kill so dangerous isn't it and so we must get rid of it and also um pray and ask the holy spirit to help me every time uh, you get a feeling of jealousy you know first thing is we have to admit we must be honest you know i've been honest many times like if if i re- if i feel jealous about something i'll just tell god god i'm feeling jealous you know i'm feeling jealous why them why not me i I'm, i'm sorry it's wrong but i am feeling jealous admit it i know it's shameful but uh, yeah that's a weakness and then from that point you say god i'm sorry how can i overcome this i don't want this in my life i don't want it in my heart then you begin to pray and say uh, heavenly father help me holy spirit work in my heart cleanse me sanctify me purify me that's the work of the holy spirit the holy spirit will cleanse us now sometimes when we have when we see that we have all these things going on right uh, and uh, you see a sudden manifestation of something think how how do i systematically overcome this maybe it might just be a small weed a small weed so it may be easy to pull it out but if it has already grown it will take a little more work to get it out all right so um yeah we have almost come to the end of the session uh because we don't have uh, you know time to go beyond so at this point we will um stop we'll just pray and uh, we will wrap up the session right sure so let's pray together let's uh, look to the lord heavenly father we thank you lord that um you're revealing from your word that we must uproot every work of the flesh from our lives and this morning god we come before you uh, pleading for your forgiveness so oh god if lord jealousy is doing its work in our hearts lord the way david prayed and he and he said search me oh god and try me lord you know god you you know you understand everything that is going on within us oh god and lord we just open up our hearts before you yes lord search us search us and if there is any wicked way in us oh god lord uproot that from our hearts lord uproot that from our lives and lord help us help us to walk uh, with a pure heart and pure motives and lord we plead forgiveness for uh, uh, treating people uh, badly oh god uh, because of uh, our jealousies and uh, our envy and uh, lord we just pray that you will show us how to uh, walk in love how to walk in restoration lord in the relationships that you've given us and uh, you have blessed us with god lord we thank you we thank you for the revelation of your word 
we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, thank you, uh, class. It's 9.50. We'll stop now, take a break, 10 minutes, and we will be back here. Uh, 10 o'clock, we'll start the next session. Thank you. Online students, uh, you don't have to disconnect. Please stay on the call, and we will be right back with you. Thank you, ma'am.